Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we are going to learn how to work on a big canvas when you have a tiny workspace. Now, I don't know how you can see this, but I have a tiny workspace. My table is not big at all. Like here's one end of it. Here's the other end of it. Like it is not a big table. So how do I work on my big canvases on my little workspace? I literally work on canvases. Every canvas I work on gets worked on in my living room. I live in an apartment, so I don't have space for a craft room or a designated area in my house for crafting. So what do I do to work on big canvases? First, you find a big canvas. Ta-da! The big canvas we're going to be working on, well, my next project that I'm going to be working on is Ketsune from Treasure Studios Arts. So it's a big canvas. If you don't remember that unboxing, I will have it up in the eye. So if you remember, this is a 50, is it a 50? Hold on, let me check. It is a 50 by 80. So it's a massive size canvas, okay? Also, real quick. For those folks that were wondering why I kept saying nine tail or kept putting up nine tail and I was saying seven tail and it was confusing you, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you look between his leg here and this eighth tail, there's the ninth tail. So it is a nine tail kitsune. So. As you already know, Treasure Studios Arts bags are already in baggies, so I will be working out of the baggies. But if not working out of the baggies, I will usually pull out my trusty, dusty Harbor Freights. My Harbor Freights are my go-to. I can reuse these at any time. Uh, I have videos on kitting up and kitting down if you would like to see those. But with Treasure Studios Arts, I won't have to because she already has her stuff in baggies. So since it's in baggies... And then you're thinking, okay, well, how are you going to work on this massive kit? And it's hanging off the table. You can't get to the top and bottom of it. It's so big. This is how you work on a big kit. First things first. Now, with mounted glue like this, and again, there should be a video up on this. I, I will have it linked. Don't worry. You don't have to go search for it. For big canvases like this, what I do is I will roll my canvas. Okay. We're going to roll it, say, about a quarter of the canvas hanging out. Now, if you have clips, you can clip them onto the end of your canvas to keep them still. Or, in my case, I like to use cover minders. Why cover minders? Because they're magnetic. I can move them easily, and I don't have to worry about them going anywhere or falling off because they're strong magnets. So I would just choose two of my magnetic cover minders. Uh oh, hold on. This one grabbed something from the other one. So we're going to find another cover miner. We're going to get our Pikachu here. I will use magnets to hold my cover or my thing in place. Boom. I will work on it from the side if I have to. I will work sideways. And if working sideways doesn't work for you, you can work top to bottom. Just push it up. Do as much as you can on this side. And then you just would unroll it. But you can use clips. You can use cover minders. You can use uh, paper clips and just hold it closed there on the sides. But I use my adorable little cover minders because it just spruces up your, your project. It gets you all excited about using your project. So that is how I would work on this kit. And then to pull the cover back, you pull the cover back for whatever section you're going to be working on. Place a cover minder on it to hold that plastic back. Boom, you're in business. You start diamond painting. You diamond paint up as far as you want to go. If you need to, work it upside down. A lot of people will work it upside down. Don't worry, your schematic is still over here on the side. You can still see it. Boom, 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 boom. Knock it out just like that. And it leaves me plenty of space on my table if I need to put, say, my trays or if I want to watch something, I can still watch something. You can roll this up however you want to, but you would roll it up to work on it. That's how I do it. Now, as you complete the kit, you're probably wondering, well, do I still use the cover minders after I complete it? So say we have this part completed. One, whenever you complete a big project, whenever you complete a section of a big project, but you don't want it hanging off the edge. Because if your house is like mine, I have kids, I have dogs, especially dogs that are shedding right now. I don't want all that fur sticking to the glue. So what you do 
is you do the same thing with that side that's already completed. You roll with the drills out. No matter what happens with the diamond painting, if you're storing it away for a rainy day, if you're giving it to somebody but it needs to be shipped, if you're just tucking it away for whatever reason, you always roll with the drills facing out. Meaning you roll like this. You roll it like that so that the drills aren't rubbing up against each other as you roll it and they don't pop off because they will come off if you roll it the other way. With mounted glue, you're not allowed to roll it the other way anyways. So as you would finish, you would roll up one side like a scroll and then unroll the other side until eventually you're done. Just like that. So that is how you work on a big kit. Um, but say like, this kit here, I will probably roll half of it up, get this whole section part completed, and then I will roll this half up and start working on the other half. So that is how you work on a big kit. Again, you can either use clips, you can use your cover minders if you have them, if you don't have clips, but you would just clip it and essentially you clip and spin. That is the Miss Coffee method for working on a big kit. You clip and spin. Clip and spin. So whatever you're not working on gets rolled and clipped. And then you can work it sideways if you need to. You can work it upside down if you need to. You can do whatever. These canvases are a lot more durable than you think. So even if you lay your arm on it or something, it will flatten itself out over time. So don't worry about if you, you know, you put a crease in it from having your arm laid on it or what have you. It'll be just fine. You just roll the part up that you're working on or that you're finished with. You clip it or put a cover minder there to hold it. And you can put as many cover minders as you need or you feel you need on the side of it or even on this part right here. You just roll it up, clip it, and then you just go to town. Just go to town on it. So that is how I would work and how I'm going to be working on my big kit from Treasure Studios Arts. If you have any other ideas, questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But as for me, I just wanted to do a quick little video for you guys to show you how I work on my bigger kits. So if this was at all helpful for you, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget, if you're not already a subscriber and would like to subscribe to see more random crazy videos just like this one, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. But with that said, folks, I must now bid you adieu. But not before reminding you, like I always try to, to be kind. Be courteous. Be cool. Bye, guys.